So, we are back again and today, what we are going to deal with is study designs. And we are dealing with study designs simply because the last time we were writing our, our assessment, we seemingly had some struggle with study designs. So, we deal with study designs. Alright, I know most of you are going to be wondering what is this about and where does this come when you're carrying out your research. A study design is basically going to explain how you plan on carrying out your research and immediately you mention the study design you're going to use, somebody will have an idea as to how you're going to collect your data. There are many study designs that can be talked about. Some of the study designs are going to be in what we consider quantitative research, while other study designs are going to be in qualitative research. And I'm pleased to tell you that most of the research you're going to be doing is going to be quantitative research as biomedical scientists. While qualitative research would be more common in public health and social sciences. It is a very important part of research, qualitative research. It helps bring out hypotheses and things like that. But most of the training that we have had, also most of the learning in both statistics and statistical tests would be more applicable in quantitative research. And I'm also happy to tell you that more than 90% of research that is carried out is going to have aspects of quantitative research. So when you learn quantitative research, it will be very applicable. And as you go forward, it will be nice to have an idea and knowledge in qualitative research as well. So study designs. There are a number of study designs that we're going to encounter, but these study designs are going to fall in two broad groups. There will be the first group which is going to be referred to as observational. There will be observational, and then there will be those that will be interventional. Two broad groups. Those are going to be observational, and those that are going to be interventional. By the word observational, we are saying all you are going to be doing as a researcher is observe. You won't actually be the one to do the actual manipulation of the participants. The participants would either be self-manipulated or just be manipulated on the basis of the circumstances. For example, you want to carry out a research where you want to determine whether a certain disease, such as malaria, is associated with a certain outcome, such as, um, let's say, mortality, malaria and mortality in children. You are not going to be the one that will be doing the manipulation where you infect the participants with malaria. What you're going to be doing is you're going to observe the patients that are infected with malaria and you then you do your you check for your result and determine whether they are actually having mortality in that case all you're doing is observing somebody who already has malaria is that clear this is why these are going to be classified into the observation then there will be other studies Mainly these ones, these studies would require quite a lot of ethical reviews to make sure that your participants are well protected. Yes, even in observational studies, it's crucial to protect your participants. You need to make sure that you do not harm. You need to make sure that the risk outweighs, the, the benefit outweighs the risk of carrying out the research as well. 
So, observational studies and interventional studies, much as these two both require a lot of rigor in your research in terms of ethical aspects protecting the participant, you would notice that in the interventional, it would actually be even more stringent. So, interventional studies, this is where you as a researcher are the one that is carrying out the manipulation of the participants. So what you're doing in this case is that you'll be the one bringing in an intervention. If it's, for example, a situation where you want to determine whether one drug works better than another drug, it would be you that would be administering this drug. Where you say, okay, we are going to randomize this participant to this drug, called drug A, and then the other participants will be randomized to this other drug, called drug B. You are the one that is providing this intervention. So, those are the interventional studies. The other ones are the observational studies. This is where the dif differences actually lie. So now, just to give you a list of studies that are going to fall in your observational studies, you find that, and I'll try to arrange them in the order of their strength, okay? The strength of evidence you're going to obtain from there. The first one are going to be, let me say, prospective cohort studies. These will probably be one of the strongest observational studies you can use. Then after the prospective cohorts, you will have retrospective cohort studies. So these are study design, prospective cohort study design, prospective cohort study design. And the third one, after this, is going to be a case control study. Case control studies. This would actually be the next to these two. Then you start having studies such as studies falling in a family of studies called cross section studies. Cross sectional studies. These are the ones that will follow. And then there is also a study design referred to as ecological study design. I think this is the one that would not give you so much evidence compared to all this. So if you are arranging them in the order of strength of evidence that you can observe or you can attend, you discover that the prospective cohorts would give you more evidence. And I will come down to break each one of these down so that you understand what this is about. Now, <clears throat> let me come to the study designs that we refer to as interventional studies. And before I say this, you should know that for as long as this study design is interventional, it would most likely be on top of all the observational studies. They will give you better evidence than the observational studies. So it will be interventional studies first, then followed by observational studies in that order. Is that okay? So the interventional studies give you better strength of evidence than the observational studies, most of the time. So the interventional studies, you find studies that we refer to generally as clinical trials. 
When you hear a study is referred to as a clinical trial, know that this study is an interventional study. And to add to that, this study is prospective in nature. When I come to explain into detail, I will break down what we mean when we say it's prospective. So, clinical trials would actually be the gold standard, especially when it comes to research design. They will give you very good evidence. I must tell you that in clinical trials, most of the time we do go to an extent where we have to streamline the participants, we have to have some sort of what we could consider um, quite a, a strict, a strict um, inclusion and exclusion criteria, but clinical trials in themselves would give you very good evidence. And I will come to detail some of the clinical trials. I should tell you that when we talk about clinical trials, it is a whole new science in itself. It's a whole new science. It requires a lot of expertise to effectively carry out a good clinical trial. So, it's not so many people that will be able to carry out an effective clinical trial, especially that it's a whole science that requires a particular training and the skill. And I'm pleased to tell you that I had that opportunity to have a training in clinical trials design. And it's not something we would want to start dwelling on and start teaching ourselves here, but we'll probably be using some of these many. And I would recommend that we actually perfect this before we start talking about clinical trials because it's a whole completely new area. Either way, you need to know about clinical trials. So when it comes to clinical trials, there will be clinical trials that will actually involve the process of randomization. By randomization, we are meaning you are ensuring that each of the participants has an equal chance to receive one of the two drugs. There are equal chances to be randomized or to be actually administered to one of the two drugs or three drugs. So the probability of getting either of the drugs is actually equal through the study population. So clinical trials, you would talk about what we call randomized controlled trials. These are actually going to be your gold standards. Randomized controlled trials would be your gold standard. And when it comes to randomized controlled trials, you discover that there will also be aspects of blinding that I will actually just introduce to you so that you really get an understanding of what this is about. There will also be aspects of blinding. Then there are those that are going to be non-randomized. Non-randomized controlled trials. When a clinical trial does not involve the process of randomization, there are circumstances where it becomes difficult to randomize. It would actually be in the family of what we refer to as quasi experiments. The quasi experiments do not involve randomization. And even down in the family of quasi experiments, you actually go in and they are designed very differently. There are many kinds of designs in the quasi experiments. In the randomized controlled trials as well, there are actually a lot of them. There are many stages in clinical trials as well. In what we call the preclinical trials, there will be stage one, phase one, phase two, phase three, and phase four trials. 
Each one of them has a special way in which it is actually designed. Each one of them has a special way in which you actually, for example, compute the sample size as well as things like measure the alpha. Where do you stop from? They are actually a whole special science that has its own area of understanding. Even the drug itself that you are, you are actually going to randomize has to be administered in a certain way. You need to explain all those things. How will you ensure that the participants do not know what they are taking and things like that. So this, in a nutshell, is going to be about your interventional studies. All right? Now, your focus is going to be on this. As you are carrying out your research, these are going to be your main focus, areas of focus, because these are most likely the kinds of study designs you most likely be using for your research. I should also tell you that these study designs would actually be far much cheaper than these study designs, and they will consume far much less time. You should also know that the cost implication of these studies might actually be reducing as you go down. 